This is another great gathering. I never ever tire of him. Thank you all for coming on a slightly chilly evening in New York in February. Um, this is another one of our highlights having um, our ambassador from Ireland to come to our wonderful small place and share his experiences and, I believe, wisdom with us. I'm really grateful to our staff, as always, for making a place that is attractive to people such as the ambassador from Ireland to America doesn't need to do this. It's not on his uh, must-do list. But Dan Mohall is, above all things, a scholar. Um, and I'm deeply grateful to him for being here with us because of the program that people like Hillary and Porrick and Marion and Miriam and all our rock stars put together all the time. Thank you for your loyalty and your attention. I hope we have you forever and ever. Let me introduce now our wonderful professor, of, and, and she will use Irish, which I cannot do. Hilary, please take the night over. Texas. <laughs> August Volshe and Shin, the Dinu Arak, Iglard Ibra. Thariglesh Pus Idel Commersoida, a oi, Erdush. August Adera Bibrikshe, Mar Inanthor Bogari. Vishe Posta, Erdelia Nach Marin, August Vibert Oig, a co. Dinavoina co Moira, a Tanshan in the Nut, Mara, Tanadun. War Sim in a Yanadukish and the Lin a Hill. August a soccer in Uara, Hustic Shave, Shrieve Shebresh of his cheek head out in Nailiga, a fine shakes an Irish echo, she knocked on the nail and saw in Uara. Shrieve Shed a chore, Irish called his kiltory Aaron. August done a pop air, Fuinche, August sail, Homa. Lake Shed Kiesa on a Halloons and Echo, Gak Shapton, Aaron Glor Radio, Mila Falta, Aaron Stashum Radio, WFUV, Us Ulskull Fordham. August Valera Hor of Star Hor and Tarshan, Seamus de Blaka and Solin, and not August Scarry Neil Mamba de Hanna. Kamalashin via Fara in Muina Nevelega in a hack vein, August Leshin Lushta Dalti Nevelega, August Beckham Gawil, um, Drama on Lushat Shin and Solin Koma, but as Shiva Eshkent. While all of them sail grow Vara than Tanya. Now this credit shake with Roll Lorna. Egan Tanya e Gultur in Nail, Marine Le Kyol, Star, August the Chiat. Credshe Grauder fits a foot in a Kela e Gultur Vine. Of in a Brewer, Cardul, August Darfuck A, a Valdini Le Kela, or Gultur or Kailura. The Exim Nak Bioga and Drum Og, a Voga O Aaron, a Val Ishtak could loose up to Nabega and so. Kinal Ambassador in the Gultur Fane of Yam, a Green and so in Yuara. Tre a ahn on Tullif Joe Lee, nor a Yenshian Kina, on Lake Lane Tool, Shuck, a Kur Urban, three Pina Day O Hin. Anish, cook the fuckle for in Gortor or let a nut, Chishian ambassador at uh, Donald Mulhall. Is more an honour doing in our spokesman the Heron, fault his fair at Kur with Ambassador Mulhall, of his true and not Nachwil Van Kayla Greta and Shuck Koma. Um, Ach Eri knows Lanny Sherai of the Big Shake Lartlin for Douglas Tahida, as a copy the necessity for de Anglicizing Ireland. 
Der Turkub e the necessity for the Anglicize in Ireland, Kelman a copy she is talk the a falchi re of Yochan the Vedica. As Goretic she and Belach the Hirshan the Heron. He the heather we how to a bunu Hunner the Vedica in Lila upgate no good tree. Val and Hunra Gluon og no Shunaha Ernaka, er glock low galor, er glock galoraku part in Amachtina gave either Milanede, Shadiag, August Milanede. Clay and the Master Mahal Smita the Glister Hida in a Lechnot, August Branoche Ernqui, a Kershid Leshen of Jochen, Arshin Kultur of his Politiacta, a Dachrig era of an Kathleen Ohin. August Kadfui and Tussel, Dolan Mahal Fain. Ruga e Bort Loiger, Bort Lorgado, Octala a Hail Katege in a Hide Lord Fanach. Parish though ear came, a star in heron of Wintermach, a galarth in Hulsful, Kirkig, Kurshe Post, Sarain, Gnohi, Atraka, Agus, Tradola. As ni father Grevshe, a Sherdish, Tadlorachta. Totreshi Katta, a gay Vienna, San Oscar, Savelic, in Alban, in Malaysia, Sigar Moin, Agus Gadian, Vienna, Katta, Vishay, Sassana, Oit, a runner, air, freedom of the city of London. Kegel a Shiva had Togan the Cursi for a Tiakta, Kasim Nakyog, Eganosal Mulhal, Illitriat, Agazi Viliak the Heron. His Mona Shinaharja, Kasim Agas Nas Nakyogaga, Illitriat, Agas Viliak the Brailiga. No few more there could have been the trip of his Viliak the Railana. Honig shaded in the start into America, Emi Lunasa and Nurig, Nur Kappa in Ambassador in Washington, D.C. Dog shape Brexit and Ratina, and as a niche, Pashe Lar, Merica and Trumpador. Ta a Twitter feed fain again, and as Nivin Drugger Erbe Air, Lotri Schley, Lerkin and Latriata, as Viliath and Avega and Louis and Shin. Director Guil, Twitter in Chief, Stock Ain't America, Lunaha, as an old spawny DC, and not a corja, there she live. Will our Twitter in chief a going fame? <laughs> Twitter in chief Nagail and A and Shalin in ours plus in the harem. Quervor Mosselakela, a cordia, the ambassador. Donald Mother. The Kermit Margaret Hillary has worked on Fall to Shin, Fort for Rome. I just told me Anna Sauce the Bell Shaw and Oct. I just saw them. The big wooling and the raw gum, the big simul, the dark end, the top banya and so, a go and learn so. Then we hear that could it's more than learn to hold us going? Ah, when we deal of Ashton Young, or I'm going to come back later. Then we will get from get going a car, go for a lunch. So it's cool. Ah, it's dumb. A very short act. I go on trail in Delg. I go in a bar with Donovan. I go this morning with a go in a nine a mile and so linging an act. I go to know it to to find more with it. So go break us fresh and the old school new hour. I go this morning morning and winter tea blocksman. I thought the cure talked and so on. So I am keen cure a for me in year. Um, uh, on notes, uh, a scopic, uh, the um, uh, Mina Morta, uh, Shakacha, where, um, uh, Dirac in Yilg, um, on, on notes, uh, all gum, going to be, going to be talked to the, uh, the start end of my ambassador, Kur, uh, Hjol, um, on Tolib Jolie, um, Quirakum, on Lake Shaw Hort. So, uh, back in, in March of last year, shortly after I was, um, Announced as the next ambassador to the United States, my former professor Joe Lee uh, sent a message to me saying, "I'd love you to come and give the uh, annual uh, lecture on Australia." I was Dermot Le Lo Gerrme, a little less Gerrme, a law school station here. So it was the first um, um, invitation that I accepted after I was uh, announced as Ireland's uh, ambassador to the United States in March of last year. So it's more than one in Dumsa. Agus the maho lakaha sin ambasad agus in our consulate go in sim ko lajus sin alskal shaw agus sa kahar shaw 
in our genre in Jokish. It's great to, to find such uh, an interest here in this city and this, and this university in the Irish language. So, in order for me to create a shop, we may cap a kin over of ek arunach don all kaj a tongue in art. We're taking the a winkle a coursey in the hair, kitchen. Over kind of the lesh on the railga, sha, must fader. I was scale the winkle a star in the hair, star in the hair in ink, instant start in to her. The extra shin a rug so far, the whole chuck. If we don't hear how Sweeney may. Her scale at all winter the lesh on Gaelga, the star the hair, and I was the pub in the hair in the satir shop. She on top of her guest to go no, do gloss the heat, I was on Avi Ockham. So I was wondering what I would speak about this evening. I thought something about Irish history, certainly, something about the Irish language, that'd be great, something about um, uh, the Irish in America, that'd be brilliant. And I thought of a topic that would cover all three of those things. So that, and my topic is. Douglas Hyde and the revival, the Irish revival of the, the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Now, Douglas de Hida. But far simule, as she's a victor shop, shine, far shin. A machine on McNeil, on far Ella, a vonic, led de Hida, a con and a kid, a bis, fair coin, vino him. So, but far simule de Hida. Scrape nor Tobak took a squelga of his asperger, Bonahor of his cane octron, Hanun of Elga, of his cane octron, Nahere, Ejer, Nadio Troka Hocht, of his Nadio died a quick. So, interesting man, there he is in the middle of his photograph in 1913 beside Owen McNeil. He was, the, he was an important writer in the Irish language and in English. And he was the co-founder of the Gaelic League in 1893, and was also, of course, Ireland's first president between uh, 1938 and 1945. Who should go court freshen? Ernest Dargenta. Of the Anne, a great while earning, if he in the corny, if he in the corny on shop, he's more not kid green or him. He shot shop. Sublian Mila Oke is not a hen. I'm sorry, she rash in her. Mina sauna, Nadia of a coig, I was me, Beltana, Nadia of a shay. Fridera, Shkrisha Lauer, Marhusk America, I shield, a Nadia of a truck shot. Maybe a count, my owl, or a lauer shin, or bow. So he came here twice uh, in, the, uh, in 1891 um, when he visited Boston and New York, and again in 1905 1906 uh, when he spent what, six months here in this uh, country and visited uh, very widely and uh, was very well received by the Irish community in the United States at that time. So, then the country is an opt my other trace of her of Estimul is starting here. She had seen the blame to either Octog Noha, no Dara Ish Parnell, I was Nayog Fehado, no Bunyog Sairstot here. It's over a runic, a gun town shop. A baha of over Douglas the Hida, Tishka will be the Kalura Emlena, Cade Fehakoig, Blain the Hunnan of Elga. A Goluder Le Orn MacNeil, V. Douglas the Hida, Tave here the Vonu on Hunra, a Octio Noka tree. August Freshen, the Shea on Blain Shaw, Blain the Guelga, so Tommy the Girat on Chama, Urber, the small array, the Blain the Shaw. So, riven out my other sale of his other to go to Hida, the cat would not go a raw model, a stalus, the grailga, a re, on Neo East Dale. The rustic on Neo East Dale, the temple shame a little dina in a corn in a corny in Erin. The grailga all art, Marhana, Rukish, a better, Quakerfon gave the winter the heron. Like Aum, an act of union, a ox kid, okay there, me okay there. Ach, da noi, the galore a call, da hanach. So there were about um, six million people living in Ireland at the beginning of the nineteenth century. About half of them were able to speak 
the Irish language, but of course many of them would have been bilingual by that time. Uh, it's reckoned that even in 1845, at the start of the Great Famine, about 50% of the population of Ireland at that time could either speak Irish or their parents had spoken Irish. So you can see that the Irish language is still quite strong, although weakening by the year when the, uh, during that first half of the 19th century. In Iug, my old kid, Dahar de Kuwik, Hosnig na slurk the dini, go more and more off the counter in a revan gwelgi the lodger, ig fall on a tear a condulgadi on Bratton, on Australia, Canada, agus go more and more the start to enter. The isig dina, ke ko tavatuk, is the vise, a ve abad a berla a large, con ve olla vigor on eshemaka, agus condul con kini yen of harlar. So, the effects in the 19th century, two things happened, I think, to the Irish language. First of all, the Irish language areas were the areas that lost the most people to emigration. And secondly, the introduction of the primary school system, the national system of education in 1833, where the emphasis was on the learning and the teaching of English, where Irish had no part in the curriculum at that time, meant that there was a weakening of the Irish language. And also, of course, people felt the need to learn English in order to be ready to leave the country and they realised that they wanted to, to thrive outside of Ireland it was a good idea to have a knowledge of the English language. So, Nuru Rugal Douglas de Hira in Mila Okade is a Shaska, Dave Hall Rog, Revan Grilga, a Ford Bosch, Ak Kurt on Chang and Driot, Elon Varog, Nuravishek, Foster Lewis, a French park. A gun there was come on. Cut after the heat, a hail mar sabert in August the hair and second day shin. August dowling the heat of oak a quick guelga on mar vi rantine force the horse nook shin a great guelga come. Kushigadi clash in the train oja after militia study era on dialect a contown galair a on guelga a vi mar tosiak to get. And the Swedish Ashtokon on Gwelda and the Swedish Dante and the Swedish a Dylan Shikshe, Fuina Annam Kletter on Craving Eva. So he was born in 1860 in French Park in County Roscommon. His father was a minister in the Church of Ireland, uh, uh, but uh, Douglas Hyde, uh, Hyde um, um, learned the Irish language from Irish speakers, who at that time there were still quite a few Irish speakers in the uh, County of Common area, the area of French Park, where he was born and grew up. And even though he came from, shall we say, uh, an Anglo-Irish background, he became absolutely fascinated by the Irish language, and it became really his, his passion for the rest of his life. And by the time, and he went then to Trinity College and started writing um, short stories and poems and translations from Irish, and became uh, a successful author. So I need a game all a class in the train or the Gushair, a glory of Puss, Marleptor, I was Kashik Blaine in Moon in Canada. To raise to Ireland as the first in me, Vehev, Octog, Nohain, Hashful Shagadi, on Tearshaw, or to Hooks the Court, or on Vostoon, I was New Aurach. So 1891, 1890, he uh, went to Canada, to the University of New Brunswick, where he became a lecturer. And after that, he took a tour down along the east coast of the United States and he visited Boston and New York. He said to him that I was a verbert in a tour of me, Mariana and Rilga, the untouching crease of Tavatuk in the Holocha, Vulsha the Hirenig, a Vina Honi on Shaw, and the Grilga in Rind Mondorf, Vulsha Fresh in the Dina Casula on Finney or Donovan on Rossa. Kurgos, we shall all be to lay up the horses and cut our shot as Grelga in Lane Octil Nokahain. The Red Dalv of Derbershay in America, a quintus in a smuenta, a hushak on keen, some old odd call a hookshay in Maliaklia, Octil Nokado, dear of Red Bonu, Conan the Grelga. So he visited here, he met a lot of Irish Americans at that time, 1891, and amazingly, he was able to give a lecture in this city in 1891 in Irish to the Gaelic Society. There were 
sufficient number of, of Irish speakers here, as there are uh, today, of course, as well. But in 1891, there were obviously quite a lot of people who had come from Ireland in the period after the famine, and Irish was still widely understood and widely spoken among the Irish in America at that time. And in my view, he developed some of the ideas here in the United States and in Canada that became part of the great lecture that he gave in 1892 on the necessity for de anglicizing the Irish nation. So, Kermit Goss, Elon Sheolodir Mehev, Octub Nokahain, Larche, the Gaelic Society in New Ireland, Astonis the Gaelga, Shavi Lerog, and the report on this. I think he spoke in Irish here, but the, the report on it from the local paper is in English, so I will read what he said in English. The Irish language, he said, was not a poor, mean, limited language, but a vast, very opulent one, varied and very opulent one, which stands upon an equal footing with Greek, Latin, and Sanskrit. And the literate than K. Scott or Fall Freshen in John and the Way of Fion, there was an enormous mass of Irish literature which has not only never been equaled, but never been approached either in age, variety, or value by any vernacular language in Europe. It was the language of the bards and brehens, of the saints and sages. Fancy that. Nishidakara Haulu, Keiko Sosta, is the male public airlock in New Arak, on Tom Shin, the Swinta Mosha, a clush dog, or Far Kalul Shaw, or Erin. Kushi Bame, or Hawak the Najanga, Igor Finulok, the Heron. A Skan Shem, Winch and the Heron, Tishkarada, Navhuramak, Lesson Janga, Nashunta. And he said, He, you can imagine, people at that time who fled Ireland after the famine, who maybe associated Irish with sort of, you know, poor, the poorer parts of the country and were maybe slightly ashamed of their, of their cultural background. Here you had this man standing up and telling them their language was up there with Greek and Sanskrit. Greek and Latin and Sanskrit. Imagine how proud it must have made them feel having left the country under such trying circumstances, we told that actually the language they left behind, the language of their, their people, was a language better in terms of its literary qualities than any of the modern European languages of that time. And he said, but he was very critical of contemporary Ireland, he said, it is a most frightful shame the way in which Irishmen are brought up, ashamed of their language, institutions, and of everything Irish. Near Capshake of Chart on Grelga Orbert in Onid on Vale, he didn't think it was necessary or was it was appropriate to replace English with Irish. But he said, What I wish to see is Irish established as a living language for all time among the million or half a million who still speak it along the West Coast, and to ensure that the language will hold a favourable place in teaching institutions and government examinations. So he knew that. The way forward for the language was to get it recognized and to have it used in education institutions. That was what, of course, the Gaelic League pushed for when they became active in the, in the 1890s and beyond, to have it recognized in government examinations and the education system. That was the way to save the language. A Russian Europe, Kapog Emar Utron, a common Noshunta Litraha, I was the our laird vlian tool of horse. On town shop, Larsha of Berla, Marnir of Gwen, and Critis Morris Nadine, the part of the Blue Shop Litera, Marhamla, and Philip W. B. Yates. Tadur Tahida, our no caution, is far a swing to a cushion, is the Fokalo who saw it she fade, shook quid then, shook quid a V. Lara again, of Berla. So, went back to Europe back to Ireland, and he was elected as the first president of the National Literary Society, founded in 1892 by W.B. Yeats and others, and he, high, because he was an older man, more distinguished man perhaps than the younger 
people like uh, like Yates and those in Yates's uh, category, he was chosen as the first president. And as president of the National Literary Society, he was required to give an annual lecture, a presidential lecture. So he delivered this lecture, and the lecture was called The Necessity for the Anglicizing the Irish Nation. And this was one of the, the most significant lectures in modern Irish history because it had a huge effect on the people of that generation. Here's what he said. When we speak of the necessity for de-anglicizing the Irish nation, we mean it not as a protest against imitating what is best in the English people, for that would be absurd, but rather to show the folly of neglecting what is Irish and hastening to adopt pell-mell and indiscriminately everything that is English simply because it is English. Augustantia Wright Marshall. This failure of the Irish people in recent times has been brought about by the race diverging this century from the right path and ceasing to be Irish without becoming English. Very powerful ideas, these. I'm still a shape, kid for a goss, winter and heron, done racing, grushing, sauce a raw. Why were Irish people satisfied to say, as a matter of sentiment, that they hate the country, which at every hand's turn they rush to imitate? So he was making the point that it was a strange paradox that Irish people professed to be determined to break away or to have their own future in their own hands. And yet, they seem to imitate everything that had come from the neighbouring island, including their language. He said, I wish to show that in anglicising ourselves wholesale, we have thrown away with a light heart the best claim we have upon the world's recognition of us as a separate nationality. So he's basically saying, by abandoning the Irish language in this way, we were giving up our claim to be regarded as a separate nationality. Dulce Gorevich's Soler, not Rev Moron, found our earning of a Portuk, the Emperor of Nebratina. Dovri Shin, Kafra Umper, Marfir Grail. So he said, obviously, Irish people do not want to be part of the British Empire. So therefore, they should be developing their Irish identity through the Irish language. And he called for them to build up an Irish nation on Irish lines. Because upon Irish lines alone can the Irish race become, once more, become what it was of yore, one of the most original, artistic, literary, and charming peoples in Europe. Joshua Fresh and Gretchen, on a topic took, Dara kur la ma the changa. Yakyat nora ave er enya tishkur and gwild all article. No one should be ashamed of speaking Irish. We should be proud of it. We must teach ourselves not to be ashamed of ourselves because the Gaelic people can never produce its best before the world as long as it remains tied to the apron strings of another race and another island, waiting for it to move on before it will venture to take any step itself. Powerful ideas. We shouldn't, we should do our own, we should follow our own national path and not be trying to imitate others and making a bad job of it. A young player in Yegon Rothschild, when he had come in the Grenada, I was rounding him to hear the Mark Ultron and on Lucia Benua. Donoi, Rubonio Hun in the Grenada, we write Mardina out, Egor of Simacos, John Argus Block, to hear the port in. Society for the Prevention for the Preservation of the Irish Language, Argus uh, on uh, the Gaelic Union. Shitchin um Agati uh the own Riv Bonu Conan the Gaelic. Um Akba Agati Krisak Akadul Ian Shin, I was near Morondi Gunog on to the Revan Aimaka on Gaelga Orbert Marchang and Lehul the Heron Shin Avi Igesh. So 
There were organizations before Conan the Grand that was founded in 1893, before the Gaelic League was founded. There were organizations like the Society for the Preservation of the Irish Language and, and the Gaelic Society, but they were rather small and elitist organizations. The thing about the Gaelic League, it was a mass organization, and it spread like wildfire around the country and really did energize people. So, Derek Cabral is on Conrad in some fair blame in the Yig, Octave Nocken Tree, like the Hilda Kung King. But he had branchy tree on tier, and this Milne gave is a tree. The shake head door of a father. Her on Conrad, Ramana Grega, her fall, and this the unseen, a don't public one too. Nor have he the Hilda Egilar's a tear shot. Milne came as a cold shay, Dorche, Garev Gokhe Twega, Mila, Erne, Gahomlon, Ekfowl of Grega, House Grev, and Chama of Muna, a three Mila scholar in Erne. So by the time he came here, he was able to say, in 1905, 1906, he was able to say that at that time there were 600 branches of the Gaelic League around the country. Imagine right that. <coughs> It started in 1893. Within 10 years or so, 600 branches. And there were 250,000 people in the country learning Irish. And it was being taught in 3,000 schools. Contrast that with the 19th century when the national school system basically ignored and in fact tried to, tried to neglect or deliberately neglected the Irish language, deliberately overlooked it and, and tried to discourage its use. So the here on Hanra on ten blue shirt the hood of our bonds, the blade to shin, the common look has quail on freshen, and some blue shirt litter the yates, more canara, nada figula, and some blue shirt coebrew talaviant, more the glock, in our glock, George Russell, A. E. Poch. Blade down with the spirit newer in air and on throshin. So no, you have got in the home lawn, and on day of cane, the jack of the eater, the dealing casual, the DP more than agarhor, on Irish law, the leader. A chap or chart literate in the hair, a comma, in Guelga wine, Augustina Casula Yates, a V in a uh, Lugonia grave in Merla. But dinner, but when a resunta, a dehida, Augusti Sinaga, a literate in Guelga, Augusti Merla. So it was, all, it was not always plain sailing for the, for the various movements. There were tensions and difficulties between them. And in particular, there was a divide between those who felt that the only language that was valid in Ireland that Irish people should be writing in was the Irish language. So that was the view of a very combative journalist from my hometown of Waterford, Dennis Patrick Moran, who was the editor of a, a crusading Irish Ireland newspaper called The Leader, which came out weekly and which hammered people like W.B. Yeats for being frauds and third-class English writers, couldn't accept at all Yeats' um, validity as an Irish writer. And then there was Yeats, of course, who insisted that you could be Irish in spirit while writing in the English language. So, Ken Master be and Yeats are to heal Sure, don't share my other. This is what W.B. Yeats said about, uh, about, uh, about Douglas Hyde. He said, Hyde, though at his worst, he is shapeless enough. He is, at his best, an admirable artist. So it's a kind of a 50-50, you know, come see, come sa kind of assessment of uh, Hyde, but well, Yeats had a certain um, certain respect for uh, uh, for Hyde, but it wasn't a completely, he wasn't completely enamored by him. Okay. Sivlian really made clear a quick. In 1905, the Aspa Arida de Gwila and Khunra, and this capital of the Medish in on right ma Kharag all a winch on the hair and Satya Shah. So 1905, the money was proven to be a problem. For, for the Gaelic League at that time. And of course, in any Irish organization in the 19th century, early 20th century, needed money, the place to come was America. There was a, uh, uh, a well-trodden path. The Fenians were coming over here, uh, raising money. Uh, the Irish Parliamentary Party were over here on a regular basis. And now, in 1905, Douglas Hyde was sent off to America, and he spent seven months here, and toured the whole country, both coasts and in between. So, um, Rani and Tahida come Tashta, Gudi, the Stadienta, and this Bulshe on Bohar, and Mina Sauna, Mina Negades of Kuig. 
Na e John O'Queen, no John Quinn, Cleodor of New Arif, a Coran Frost the Kaila in Gordahida. So it was a man called John Quinn who organized the visit, Hyde's visit to America, and did it brilliantly. Now, those of you who know your Irish literary history will recognize the name John Quinn. Because John Quinn was one of the great patrons of the arts in early 20th century America, in that he provided help to W.B. Yeats and James Joyce. So, far callul about O'Queen. Is then he hooks a quid war cower up the Yeats of his Joyce. Can he say law screaming the Uha of his hooks a arrogant dunvert? The Goss Yeats, who's talking up the Yeats, she's sure. She's an Ahar Yeats. You're a Vise in Honey in New York, either Mill Naked is a hooked, or this Mill Naked fed all the Russian boss. So, Quinn in particular is very helpful to W.B. Yeats because Yeats' father, John B., in 1908, his children decided to give him a trip to America and they, they put together the money and sent him off to America to see this wonderful country. He liked it so much here in New York, he never went home. And of course, he had no way of, made, of, of earning a living in New York, so W.B. Yeats would sell his manuscripts to John Quinn, and John Quinn would then uh, give the money to uh, John B. Yeats to enable him to live a life of reasonable comfort here until he died in 1922. So, Dagger O'Queen Dros Uldok Don Gorjo who should court our Galore Karaka. I'm sorry, Sean Tomshaw, who shall have right Dine Egoel Grain Gamaka, Larsha Dominica Garica, Exula, and Stegan or Honig Slurts and Moor, Conish the Clash, Valishi Rindva Arrogant Egor on Conwell Freshen, Hashlushay, Kurmagos, Hashlushay with the Washington, August Forshay Kriva with the Unchop Bond. So in 1906, Douglas Hyde did a tour of America including Washington, and he was invited to the White House to have lunch with President Theodore Roosevelt. Can you imagine that? He had lunch with Roosevelt, had a great conversation with him over, over lunch. So, we did spore out, not again, that's an on Roosevelt. And we on quotation, though. So, Roosevelt was very courteous and very hospitable towards him. And this is an extraordinary thing, you find this amazing, but George Roosevelt Lesh, the Roseman and Douglas Hila. Grushy Thresh Ashta Escreev, in the end of Comparaja, either Shanskate, Glelga, or the Sasaga Lucklenach. He told Hyde that he had just finished an article comparing the old Irish mythological stories with the Norse sagas. Can you imagine a president? Anywhere, <laughs> at any time. <laughs> Spending his time. But he was a busy man. He was a busy president. He was one of these, you know, driven presidents. But he was writing an article comparing the Irish and the the Norse sagas. What a man. I must try to find that article. I'm sure it's somewhere available. I'm sure the Library of Congress will be able to find it for me. So Trace Trace for the land the heat right, or Uton or Hunra, or on Hunra, could he um Milnake Kudja, no Ravarti, she had got of Glushat no Shunoke, Mariana Shin, Dog the Hida on Conra, Tishko Capshe, got Kart, the Conra, the Oskata, the Gahania, Agus Gonga, Jarka, Politia, the Orna of Ekon. So in 1915, he left Conra Nabilka because that year, of course, during the First World War, Ireland had become politicised and the temperature of Irish political life had had risen considerably, and the Gaelic League decided that they would become an openly nationalist movement. And Hyde's view was that, you know, the Gaelic League should be non-political and should be able to cut, draw people from all walks of life, to all political perspectives, into membership of the League. So Dogshe uh, on, on uh, Conrad. <coughs> so, Cutters breed the upper the Hida or son the Changa, and the son the Heron is the blame to Nuravisha and Ganis, a hundred and a grega, either Mil Ochkid, Nokatri, August Milanakid, Sakuja. So, what was 
What was the contribution of Douglas Hyde and the Gaelic League to the island at this time? Now, to to far call out in the will, we the raw by other on overshot. She said, "Don't be it." So, Jack Yates, go read the blue ship tea, cultura, on top of the Gafad is starting to hear it on Rayshin. So, do she, you're a large and yig on douche noble, a noble at all. This is W. B. Yates now reflecting on the importance of the cultural movements in Ireland in the 20 years before independence. And this is what he said when he was speaking and picking up the Nobel Prize in Stockholm in 1923. And this is Yeats at his, at, his, at his kind of, you know, confident best. The modern literature of Ireland, and indeed all that stir of thought which prepared for the Anglo-Irish War, began when Parnell fell from power in 1891. A disillusioned and embittered Ireland turned away from parliamentary politics. An event was conceived and the race began, as I think, to be troubled by that event's long gestation. Dr. Hyde found in the Gaelic League, which was for many years to substitute for political arguments a Gaelic grammar, and for political meetings, village gatherings where songs were sung and stories told in the Gaelic language. Meanwhile, I had begun a movement in English, in the language in which modern Ireland thinks and does its business. Founded certain societies where clerks, working men, men of all classes could study those Irish poets, novelists and historians who had written in English and as much of Gaelic literature has, has had been translated into English. So there was Yeats claiming that the great stir of thought that is the cultural movements in the period after the death of Parnell had transformed Ireland and had paved the way for the revolution between 1916 and 1922. Don't know why you really need to cost her no shame. Akmosma la chunker on Khunra. Alvasa, did hob brand new. Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, could I could I have the um? Yeah, sorry. Come this guy. There's a there's a very um. There's a very interesting and important photograph here, um, which I want to show you, as a, as evidence of the chunker Conor Nguelga, the influence of Conor Nguelga on the island of the time. Now, this is the photograph, right? And it's a photograph of. Sorry, we're going to stay here. <laughs> it's a photograph of the, the Ordesh, or the annual gathering, the annual general meeting of Conor Nguelga. And it took place in Galway's town hall in 1913. So Douglas Hyde was still, still the, um, the um, president of the Gaelic League at this time. And the important thing about this photograph is to see who's in it. Now, first of all, you see, interesting, because for the time, not quite gender balanced as it would be today, but you know, not bad considering we're talking about 1913. So it shows that the Irish movements were progressive by the standards of that time, and that's why I suppose we can say that uh, Constance Markovitz, you know, became the first woman to be elected to the to, to Parliament uh, at Westminster, and then took a seat in in Dublin instead. But in this photograph, you have so to on screen or Pauling O'Connor. So you have Pauling O'Connor, the, the writer, famous Irish language writer. You have Sean T. O'Kelly. He was a successor to Douglas Hyde as President of Ireland. Okay. Todd Douglas de Hida Fainau. Shine Douglas de Hida, Owen McNeil. August Sean T. O'Kelly, Sean Stoker. Okay. The Owen McNeil on Freshen. The Pauli McPierish on. Patrick Pierce was there. Sean McDiarmid. Eamon Catch. Willie Pierce. August Michael O'Hanrahan. So, the Truro on. A Heenig on Proclamation. 
Yeah, they have a share there. A re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, a re, So you had Patrick Pierce, you had Eamon Kant, and you had Sean McDermott. Don't do it. Three signatories. Three of the seven signatories. I was fresh in. We count George Noble Plunker now. I was a Van Kela. Tish Mahori, Joseph Mary Plunkers. Joseph Plunkers. Sheena Horella. I was the, the this is Kathleen Clark now. Van Kela and Tom Clark. So, us, on Shakhtar, a Heenig, on the proclamation in Aviation Stadium. The, the Brint, a Kuiger account, Sakhonna, I was Tashid and Shaw, as a Green Rush, not not even the Rolling Shin. I was fashion. The Eamon de Valera on. On trio. Booked around the hearing. To the third. So you had the first three presidents of Ireland in the one photograph. Now, of course, at that time, they could have had no idea of what was in store for them in the years ahead. Not only that, you have Desmond Fitzgerald. Ara a real to Sarah Stark Aaron. I was Ahar Gareth Fitzgerald. I was the, the O'Reilly on Freshen, Far Avariak in any of the The Arnold de Blyda, Ara Freshen in Real for Sarah Stark Aaron. The Paracarni on Achum Aron Nevin, the composer of our national anthem was there. So I was the Willie Pierce on Drahor, 20th month Pierce. So, the honor of Dina Aon, I go in winter call, the Arya Mock, Koska, I was the rave lord in the hair in Eder, the Indian Gashir in his Navy on Fahendo. I was freshen for Constance Markovitz on, on Cain Ban, a Hawag, a Gore Parliament, the Vratina of his Parliament in the hair. Cain Ara. Kate Ban, the Mar Aristot, uh, is in our tier fame. So, we do them when we're on Ella Leroy, Marion, our eighth of his chunker, Conan and Gregor, no, brand new, Aaron, Aaron uh, Greengrass Shaw. I was talking about Shaw, so, so now introduction, Atlas of the Irish Revolution. A five she again, Cork University Press, Old School Fame, August, um, New York University Press, um, um, from the Old School Show. So, in Green Graph Award, Fighter Truer, this is the Canary, or Ari Mark Nikoska, Ahar Kionella, I was Menachela, and Kuigu Kenner. I see Truer Ella on a Kailag, a Re Shocked in Nikoska. So, Shahid was Winter Durham. Can look at the lecture of Crit New Bolam, ear the end of Kubla Keshna Aragat. Just a border. Kiko Tawit of Kisarev on Avioka the Starna here and Kilbino him. A quidum von Riotanok, Dari Mok Nikoska, Vion Avioka. It's no longer Kaurig Neglusha T. Orha than Avioka and Leshon Afru Mion, a hall in air and on Townshin. The Mohorisham by a hep. On real tish gukish for home rule. In the area of Doyog, I was in the area of Doyog, I was in the area of a cardio. I was Tosak on Cade Cogger down there. It's more of it here than Ariel Mark. A Hroig on Avioken. I was going more and more. Glushok Avon in the jungle. Quit forward and sprint of the Fekod in Glushok, Naps Blacks in the Heron, either Nadia Gashadian, Nadia. So, my conclusion is that you could have had, you would have had probably an Easter Rising without the Gaelic League. Because I think the key factor behind the Easter Rising and all that followed 
was the failure to deliver home rule between 1912 and 1914. In other words, Peter Ireland had, had pressed for home rule through parliamentary methods for more than a generation. And then home rule was passed through the parliament three times. And still, there was a crisis over home rule and it wasn't delivered. And then the First World War broke out. And that provided the fuel and the opportunity for more radical views of Ireland's future to prevail. So the Gaelic League wasn't essential to the evolution of the revolutionary moment in Ireland between 1960 and 1922, but it did provide some of the spirit and the, the inspiration. Because remember, Patrick Pierce, Thomas McDonough, Joseph Barry Plunkett, Eamon Kent were all enthusiasts for the Irish language. Thomas McDonough once said that he was, in his younger days, he was the most West British person in Ireland. Remember, Thomas McDonough did his thesis not on some Gaelic poet, but his thesis on Thomas Campion, an Elizabethan poet, the most English of poets you could imagine. And he was, he actually went to a Gaelic League meeting in Kilkenny in about 1905 or thereabouts, or six. He went there to poke fun at this ridiculous idea of trying to uh, promote the Irish language. He was a really enthusiast for the, really big enthusiast for the English language and English literary tradition. And he became captivated by the Gaelic League and by the Irish language and became totally devoted to the Gaelic League and ended up as one of the leaders of the Eastern Rising as a result. So it did provide some of the inspiration. And I think without the Gaelic League, I don't think the proclamation would have had quite the quality that it has, where a hundred years later we can look back on it and still feel a degree of inspiration passing down through the generations from that document. The other thing was the, the, uh, was the influence of the cultural movement. I was kept called Tom of the Isarev Tehida on Aumshin, on the Aumshin. How important was Douglas Hyde? Mohorosha, Khomshe Quintusna Turami is Tom of the a spray on glue and newer at the egfoss in Dera on Neowish of the Saglock part, Larnach, the rare lord, a Daric era, Gabonus of Cave Nino. So, how important was Hyde? Well, he was the one who came up with these ideas that stirred the pot in Ireland in a big way. And also, I think, provided um, a passionate interest for a new generation of Irish people that were emerging at that time. And the thing about that generation was that they were the first properly educated generation of people from ordinary Irish nationalist Catholic backgrounds. <laughs> Look at them. Thomas McDonough, modest background, ended up with a university degree. Um, Eamon de Valera, likewise, from a, a cottage in, in West Limerick, ends up as a teacher in Carysford College of Education. Um, so, uh, you did have this generation of people. They were the first generation of Irish. And of course, James Joyce belonged to that generation as well, remember. He went a different road, but he was part of that first generation of Irish Catholic nationalists who had an opportunity to educate, to be educated to the highest level at that time. I was coming well or we turn the hair on this thought to help. There are a lean to my yellow on town of Ha to heed as a tear shot, um, meal of kids, no cahain of this uh, native quick shay. I should say, I could have probably more degrasoch and shot, a grev ansimaka, a gossi a heel bookish. Pugadar inspirad to the heeda, Agstagaki and Ernach Ella, Horny Quig on tear shot, La Heim Politul, a guest to come. So the Irish and American were very important. Because when people like Hyde and others came here, and the same was true with Yeats. I mean, Yeats gave his most nationalistic speech ever, not in Ireland, but in New York. 
4,000 people turned up to hear him speak in 1904, commemorating Robert Emmett. So I think when people like Hyde and, and Yates and others, and Pierce, came to America, they were inspired by this, this, the response they got here, the inspiration they drew from the fact that there were so many Irish Americans who were, who were proudly determined to see Ireland develop its own potential in its own way. I was coming earlier on Erin Wayne What about Ireland? What about the Irish language? Kiko Massa, Daring La, Conor Nguyenga, and Changa a Hawaii, and the Orbert. It's kind of not Irish, less on Changa a Avenue, more free of young and the hair. A gun chunker on Glushok, the Kurdo, not the hair, they are born in Octiog Nok and Three. Tommy Kappa, not near on Changa a green a Kurd Benish. So, <coughs> what about the Irish language? Obviously, Yelikli didn't succeed in transforming the linguistic um, circumstances in Ireland. The language continued to decline in great up areas and had a halting success in, in, in the rest of the country. But I take the view that without the influence of the Gaelic Lee, we wouldn't have the Irish language at all now. Because it seems to me that, that without a generation of people determined to light the flame of language revival, the flame would easily have been extinguished. Uh, so I think that we owe it to the Gaelic League and the Douglas Hyde, the fact that we still have the Irish language, and it still has a fighting chance of, of succeeding and becoming a more important language in Ireland in the years and decades ahead of this Kaitu Fekundar, Colonel Goss, on Glushant. Gwyllt's coming in the area of the Nish, August Ta, a long dog to you, August Toshi, the Dull, the Stadier, all along three grade. So the Gwyllt's coming that are a big success story in Ireland, and they give, I think, an opportunity for Ireland to develop a new um, uh, respect and a new confidence in the Irish language. So Hashborn, Tahi, Govlos, Govlos, Tahida, Satyosha, Keko Tarotak, the Serev, the Hair Nix, the Stadienta, the Stablinta, Riv, the Eligoshelia. For Frinsha, Inspiraja, and the Stakia, he had the Gor, the Glushati, Noshunak, a Dahrig Hera, Sere, Borhawatak Shin. So I think that Hyde and others, but in this case I'm talking about Hyde, um, certainly drew inspiration <coughs> from his time here in the United States. And that inspiration was carried back across the Atlantic and sowed the seeds for the creation of the Gaelic League, which, if you look at this photograph here, you can see had a major impact on a generation of people who turned out to be the leadership of the Ireland that was transformed in the years between 1916 and 1922. Could have been Margaret, I saw Asia Gromos, Ambassador, Omil Kahal, Pashe Tarchana, a couple of Kesh Diragards. Ambassador Mulhall is willing to take a few questions if anyone would like to. And you're being. Oscar, I don't know, Oscar. No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, Probably a, a political question, but um, the failure of the North of Ireland government uh, to be able to put together a government based somewhat on Sinn Féin, uh, their demand that Gaelic be taught in the schools. Um, what is your opinion? Well, it's um, the uh, the current uh, impasse uh, in Northern Ireland has uh, obviously many dimensions, but the, the key issue that's uh, separating the parties at the moment is the issue of um, whether or not there should be a freestanding uh, Irish Language Act. Uh, the content of that act, of course, would also be a matter for discussion and negotiation. Um, it seems to me that, uh, that the, the Irish language 100 years ago was a fundamental part of 
Irish identity uh, around the island of Ireland. And I think today in Northern Ireland, it has certainly acquired a great significance uh, for people uh, of Irish nationalist uh, background. And therefore, it seems to me that, that uh, as part of the, uh, the process of, of political advancement in Northern Ireland and of, uh, of, um, of reconciliation, that um, you know, reconciliation project in Northern Ireland does um, involve respect for um, the identities of the communities in Northern Ireland. And clearly, the Irish language is a very important part of the identity of Irish nationalists uh, in Northern Ireland, and therefore, obviously, needs to be to be reflected in the the um, the public uh, affairs of Northern Ireland. But should it not be an elective rather than a requirement? Well, I don't I don't think anybody um, has suggested that it should be uh, compulsory. I think the I think the Irish Language Act is is is envisioned as an act that would facilitate. Uh, the development of the Irish language, but not, I think, uh, an effort to to to make people who don't have an interest in the Irish language compulsorily, um, you know, study the language. That that would be um, uh, clearly not something that I think anyone uh, would want to uh, to do, because clearly compulsion doesn't work, and it certainly wouldn't work in a situation such as that in Northern Ireland. Andreas, Springfield, Massachusetts. Who's a clown on Shin? Doranum, Doranum, or Hagerty is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is is on John and this is going um can a hoig on on on on Medina on show a via Lord Greg in a line this talk a major um up on Townshin Craig of being in the uh, on on on Gorto Moor via the lawn dine on show a honing o o counter and the heron in a Revguega, more more pre of Tonga, Tonga Dukas, Tonga Mora, and Shin. So, so we, obviously, a kind of a boss near the Kushe, could he, Washington, Vul Farlesh, Egon Stosh, and Trainach, obviously, by a Olaf, and Guelga, so as an old school Catholic, Washington, obviously, she and Farshin, a hoik. Could you unshock Bon? Let the heat So we had a good far shot error on on on Tuktoran Mosba. So yes, this book, and actually I'm going to to write a blog about the book that that um, that um, Douglas Hyde wrote or published in in 1937, <laughs> just before he became president. He published this book on my tour of America, and it's it's absolutely full of. Um, his accounts of encounters he had with Irish people around America, many of whom uh, spoke quite good Irish. So I think he was very much, the question was, was 
the Hyde, old Hyde and the Gaelic League, were they aware of how much Irish there was in the United States at that time? Yes, they were, because uh, Hyde records it. And I mean, the book is not very analytical. He doesn't kind of, doesn't try to analyze, but he does, he does record the conversations he had. Now, he didn't care for everyone he met here, I have to say. <laughs> he was very hard. Vishiana, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, um, Lodger, um, Mar, um, uh, and Rohan Shenadine, he was very strong in, in criticizing the kind of lace curtain Irish, you know, the Irish that he felt were kind of ashamed of their Irishness and the ones that brought him to the clubs after he gave his lecture. He felt they were, they were, as he said, in Ufosok. Uh, <laughs> so he didn't care for everyone, but he, he did like meeting the Irish speakers that he came across, and there were plenty of them around the time. Michael Ishmael, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm just been told that, that they're, they're going to publish this book again, um, and that would be great, and maybe a translation as well, because it is it is a fant it is a, an amazing piece of social history, really, because he he describes Irish America at that time, I think, in great detail, and I think he must have visited. I I haven't didn't, haven't counted, but he must have visited forty or more. Uh, places around the U.S. and went all the way from the East Coast, up and down the East Coast, to the Midwest, and on to the uh, to the West Coast. So he, he did a, a really comprehensive tour of America. Yes, yes. Yes. Jack, just Hillary. a little point, he discovered mint juleps. He did. Yes, in Washington, yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. He was, he was, he was been fascinated by the old mint julep, I have to say. Yes. Yes. yes. yes. yes. And to increase the number of speakers in Ireland from 73,000 to 250,000 over 20 years is to represent about 5% of the population. Yeah. So at a 5% increase in speakers, every 20 years, by the year 2,500, yeah, 2,500, the country will be speaking Irish. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I read that, and there seems to be a lot of reinforcement to the same, we're doing a little better, but there's no real vision in it, which is to bring Irish back, and I'm writing a little paper on that, um, which I'd like to present sometime, somewhere. Sure. I've been rejected so far by the Irish speakers in Ireland. <laughs> the American Irish studies. But anyway, having given up, but the paper is basically um, every Irish teacher in Ireland in primary school has honours Irish, so they have to be able to teach it somewhere. And therefore, there's no reason that every primary school in Ireland couldn't be switched over to Irish. But you have to do it all at once to start off with the infants, the very first year, and then every year, moving forward a year. And that gives everybody time to prepare, and five years' notice. And then you roll it through all the years and everybody has time. But besides that, um, that's, again, reading too much of the education system, but it's really got to be more of a movement. And then the movement has to, you know, have songs and poems and models and logos. And uh, basically, in this computer age, a good data portal to bring it all together and facilitate that. Now, those are my thoughts. Sure. I'm just wondering, are there any good thoughts uh, in the Irish government or over in Ireland as to what could be done a little better, but I'm not sure that that 20 year strategy is meeting its objectives at this point in time. Well, look, I mean, um, uh, Shea and Frank and Fadonga and uh, Keshin and now, um, Gor Heboring on on Changa Avonu is her Nayuk Fehedo, August Dera on Fehuish. August a nation son the heroish um Toshansagring uh Rulella Toshansagring Rulella Yen of Con on John Albert August uh Tagolyot Toshin um um on a um uh what is Doilum a gore um 
uh, Usoj, August, August Forbert, and each other. Uh, so yes, I. It seems to me that we failed in the in, in the twentieth century to to revive the Irish language. In that, the language declined pretty much throughout the the decades of of, of compulsory Irish. And my Irish is the Irish of the Christian Brothers. I mean, I didn't need the kind of Gukish me on on Rajasha screen me on shop in Shakacha, I go on Lake Shop. She should not care to watch us scream near Reeve or Elm, a Vime, a Skull, uh, Ome, a Skull, and a Bora Christi, Knoxi, and the Bora Larga. She should not have a quick, um, being okay. So I think we failed uh, to, to revive the language. I think we have a fighting chance in this century to do it, but with different methods. Uh, and, I, and I'm encouraged by certain things that have happened. I mean, the Great Skull Movement is obviously a very good, because it's a terrible tragedy that for a hundred years nearly now, we've had compulsory Irish, or well, uh, some version of, you know, an Irish language being, you know, being pushed quite hard through the education system. And people study Irish for, for 13 years, between the age of four and 17, leave school, and within a few months, have lost all capacity to speak the language. That's a tragedy. That won't happen with those who are going to Wales Calder. Also, I think things like TG Carr are a very positive development because this is giving an opportunity, first of all, for Irish speakers to get uh, a to have their own medium, to have their own opportunity to to use and to to, uh, to communicate through Irish. Um, so I. I but, but my own view is that, that to try to, to replace the English language, which Hyde said was not possible or even desirable 120 years ago, I think it would be even more difficult now. I take my inspiration from something the German president once said to me, right? This is uh, not the current one, the previous one, when I was ambassador in Germany. And when I, and, and he said to me, and he said this publicly as well, actually. Um, he said, you know, he said, and this is, he was actually, appealing to the British not to leave the European Union. And he said, he said, he said, I'm prepared to have English as the language of the public life of Europe and to have our own languages for the things of the heart, for our, you know, to dream in, to be inspired in, to write poetry in and so on. And I think that might be the best option for, for Irish as well, to to see it as a language that can <coughs> can do something for Ireland and can can say things about Ireland about ourselves which can't be said in any other language and that might be the rationale for people to uh, to make a, big, a bigger effort as European Irish people to actually do the European thing and have our own language alongside the English language which we use for for the public affairs of Ireland and of Europe. Bernie Magapel. Our young, our Scotsman, a heron, the wild lum, what we have so hard did, as a half pinch of ambassador, I guess that's a room for Jock to a rash reached. My thanks to the ambassador for coming here for an inspiring lecture. I guess. A while I'm going to pull him aboard the Mora. Mora Barrow, Davenant's daughter. Do you know that still live in Philadelphia? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure a charger, but we have Steve Lake as a half the ma. I guess that's a little bit when she's to make him to go when she's out to send the acting to a hug and canvas of that old male chahal. And he'll be has a rat in a chajiling, Caroline, I guess, Hillary, I guess, got in a little. Ah, Fajero, does she since there at base all last year, Fallen Shin? He's joined us downstairs for some more conversation uh, and some refreshments. Carmilla Mahigav.
İyi ki var, herkes sularını vardı.